Today's video is brought to you by Upstart. Hey, brother! Guys, we all love Mr. Weasley, right? Hard worker, good wizard, does anything he needs to for his family, puts them above all else. Doesn't even flinch when it comes to joining the Order of the Phoenix or standing up to Lucius Malfoy. We have a very different idea about what disgraces the name of wizard, Malfoy. Clearly. And also, rather adorably, doesn't know the function of a rubber duck. Tell me, what exactly is the function of a rubber duck? Oh, um... Which, now that I think about it... That can't be it, right? Hard to tell. Shot. We know what this means, right? It's on. Safe to say that one is solved. What were we talking about? Right, Mr. Weasley, super great guy, but also is he a corrupt ministry employee? Today we discuss. Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Upstart. As always, financial responsibility is a big deal. I do recommend you do your homework and make sure you make decisions that are best for you. Guys, there is no two ways about it. We are living during a kind of unusual times right now, and you might be looking to feel a little bit more financially secure. So if you're needlessly throwing money every month at high interest credit card debt, it's time you took a look at Upstart. Upstart is a new kind of lending platform that goes beyond the traditional credit score and takes into consideration you, your education and job history. Meaning you don't have to have a perfect credit score in order to get a good rate. And it's fast and simple to check that rate. And because it's just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. The hard pull won't actually happen until you accept the rate and proceed with the application process. And the best part is that once approved, most people find that they have the funds in their account the very next business day. So be sure to go and find out why Upstart has 4.9 out of five stars on Trustpilot and how low your rate could be by going to upstart.com slash SCB. It only takes a few minutes. Again, that is upstart.com slash SCB. Link is in the description down below. Okay, so let's face it. Even on its best days, the Ministry of Magic is not exactly like the most honorably or well-run organization. Even before Voldemort is even back, you start to see some of the shady dealings of the place. Like they charge Harry for underage magic, which he did not do without any follow-up investigation whatsoever. Conversely, they actually let Harry off the hook altogether for underage magic that he did perform. No harm done. Although, to be fair, it was on accident and warranted. They allowed Dementors to guard Azkaban. That's the end of that sentence. And after Voldemort comes back, but before he actually takes over, things get real bad, where they stage a fairly hostile takeover of the education of the students living in their country. <coughs> What could possibly be more hostile than that? And they unabashedly force the Daily Prophet to print stories that are in line with the ministry's agenda, which is like a gigantic big ol' no-no. Like, when we learn about freedom of the press in school, this is exactly what it's guarding against. There is also strong evidence to suggest that they are accepting bribes from Lucius Malfoy, and Molly believes that the reason that Arthur is being held back at the ministry is due to prejudice. It's Arthur's fondness for muggles that held him back at the ministry all these years. Fudge thinks he lacks proper wizarding pride. Wizarding? Wizarding. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. And while I have absolutely no difficulty believing that that is in fact true, Arthur is also not doing himself any favors in the performance department. I mean, seriously, man, how hard was it to figure this out? No look. Did it go in? Yeah. Yes! Shotgun! <laughs> I missed all of them. <laughs> 
Hashtag duck in a cup. Here's what I mean though. Despite the fact that Arthur almost always has the moral high ground, he's also not opposed to breaking or bending the rules a bit. I like how I said breaking or bending as if bending is not as bad as breaking. <laughs> and you might be thinking, well, yeah, but if Arthur's breaking the rules of a corrupt system anyway, like then is there really anything wrong with that? And sure enough, there are examples of that happening. And in my opinion, they're some of Arthur's finest moments. For example, when the golden trio is breaking into the ministry in my least favorite scene of the entire series and Harry is posing as Runcorn. Actually, wait, no, I can never remember. Is it Runcorn or Runcorn? Rookwood that he's posing as. Runcorn. Runcorn? Yeah. Rookwood. Run. I'm pretty sure it's Runcorn. Are we sure? Why would they be so similar? I can't answer that. <laughs> Anyway, Arthur confronts Wunkrorn, whatever it is, and straight up threatens him for tracking down the person who faked Dirk Cresswood's family tree. <laughs> Did I get the, is it Cresswell? Yeah, it's Cresswell, you said Cresswood. Does it even matter? No. <laughs> and the thing is here, he's threatening him despite this actually being Runcorn's job and the current position of the ministry, which just makes it a great example of a time that Arthur is breaking the rules with just and correct reasons. But there's also so many times that he's breaking the rules for his own reasons. The most obvious example of this though has got to be the time that he helps pass a law that will allow him to continue his own personal hobby of tinkering with a muggle car. Arthur Weasley, you made sure there was a loophole when you wrote that law, just so you could carry on tinkering with all the muggle rubbish in your shed. Whenever we do those, I can never decide what level of commitment to take to being in character. Like when it's Voldemort, it's like, obvious, you go for it. But Mrs. Weasley, Hard to tell. But yes, in this particular instance, I do think that he is technically right per the law, that he is allowed to own the car and make it fly as long as he doesn't actually do it. But let's face it, if you're building a car that you are making able to fly and including an invisibility booster, you're gonna fly it. Actually though, one of my all time favorite moments from the entire Harry Potter movie series is when Arthur finds out that the boys took the car and asks, Did you really? How'd it go? Oh, oh, did you ever this is clearly someone interested in the results of whether or not his tinkering worked. And it might not seem like that big of a deal, but the very existence of this car risks violating the statutes of secrecy and revealing the wizarding world, which is exactly what happens. You were seen. You were seen. You know, Snape, but he's from the South. <laughs> Can we just like remake the entire Harry Potter series acting as Snape as if he's from the South? Now, what would you get if you mixed an infusion of wormwood? <laughs> The thing is, he can get away with this here because not only did he help write the law, but he also mans the department in charge of enforcing that same law. Sneaky, sneaky. Next up though is when Arthur accepts 10 tickets to the top box at the Quidditch World Cup. First of all, from the best of my understanding, it is the case that within government agencies, you can only accept gifts that are less than $25 in value. And now I don't know all the specific stipulations as it pertains to the wizarding world. And after all, the Ministry of Magic are the ones who are putting on the Quidditch World Cup. So they may have free reign over who sits where. Not to mention, I also can't pretend to understand the scalping market in the wizarding world either, but if we're going to compare it to like, you know, the Super Bowl, and let's face it, it's the Quidditch World Cup, like the worst seats in the stadium were going for about $4,000. And in this particular case, Mr. Weasley is getting 10 top box seats. So I'm not sure if your math is the same as mine, but I get more than $25. Either way, the kicker here though is why he gets these special tickets. I like Ludo. He was the one who got us such good tickets for the cup. I did him a bit of a favor. His brother Otto got into a spot of trouble, a lawnmower with unnatural powers. I smoothed the whole thing over. This one feels kind of bad to me because it's such a lavish gift that I'm kind of convinced that whatever that lawnmower was doing, it was a tick more than unnatural. And to be fair, I doubt Arthur was like, Ludo, dear boy, yes, this lawnmower business, it's pretty nasty. He's looking at a stint in Azkaban, if I had to guess. Although I could, you know, look the other way, maybe in exchange for some premier Quidditch World Cup tickets. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Nonetheless, extravagant gifts like this tend to have expectations tied to them, especially when you consider the source, Ludo Bagman, who's already kind of towing the line with all of the gambling that he's doing. Now, don't get me wrong here. It's not that I'm like upset that the Weasleys got to be in the top box. I mean, they totally deserve it. But it's also the place where Barty Crouch Jr. steals Harry's wand, runs away, and then is able to shoot the dark mark into the air and reunite with Voldemort, but you know, just saying. Speaking of which, there's also this time where Arthur is able to get Mad-Eye off after attacking some dustbins, which you know, is fine, except for the fact that it's actually Barty Crouch Jr. and he's trying to lure Harry into the Triwizard Tournament even though he's underage and covertly navigates him through the entire tournament and gets him to the graveyard where, you know, Voldemort actually returns. Am I saying it's Mr. Weasley? Weasley's fault that Voldemort came back. No, to be, to be clear, that's not what I'm saying. Then there's the time that Mr. Weasley attaches the Dursley's fireplace to the wizarding flu network, which he openly admits is in fact illegal. A hydro fireplace connected to the flu network, you see, just for an afternoon, you know, so we can get hairy. Mobile fireplaces aren't supposed to be connected, strictly speaking, but I've got a useful contact at the flu registration panel and he fixed it for me. I have no ability to do accents. Again, we're just cashing in a favor here to skirt some tiny law, no no big deal. And the place that he's going is a muggle home, but they already know that wizards exist and it's only going to be for an hour. Like what harm could come from it? Just a magical malady from some untested ton tongue toffees. Whoops. Mr. Weasley is able to clear this up, which is great, but the Dursleys were trying to get him out of there like as soon as possible. And if they had succeeded, then they would have had to take Dudley to like a muggle doctor and potentially violated the statute for secrecy. And then Mr. Weasley and his friend at the flu network definitely would have been in it, you know, deep and not for nothing, but Harry himself proves at the Weasleys how easy it is to like exit the wrong grate when using the flu network. Diagonally. What did he say, dear? Diagonally. I thought he did. Meaning it's also possible that a completely different wizard may have accidentally ended up, you know, in the Dursley's living room. Also, I don't know exactly how it works, but it's possible that Harry could have been like an even more danger because he was particularly protected within the Dursley's home, but I don't know how that pertains to like the flu network if he was not supposed to be added. So yeah, Mr. Weasley, not afraid to break a few laws, but also I'm still having a difficult time thinking of him as corrupt. Maybe a poor judge of potentially catastrophic consequences. Consequences. He's great at quenching thirst. You know it. Maybe more like a poor judge of potentially catastrophic consequences. I did it again. <laughs> Maybe a poor judge of potentially catastrophic consequences is a better assessment. But you know what they say, lead by example. And if you work for a place that is constantly known for breaking or bending rules themselves, then how could you possibly expect your employees not to do a little bit of the same? So in summation, is what I'm saying that all of these things are the ministry's fault? Yes, that's what I'm saying. For example, we let the staff know that sometimes we like to blow off a little steam by playing duck in a cup. It's slippery slope. Also need to give a huge thank you to Noemi Piccioni who submitted this idea to us. Thank you so much. But there you go guys for my question of the day. What is the function of a rubber duck? Let us know in the towel section down below. Guys, great news. Super Carlin Brothers trivia is back. That's right, guys. This Friday, we are going live and challenging you to just a medley of all sorts of trivia questions based on any of the topics we cover here on Super Carlin Brothers. That's Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Marvel, and Avatar The Last Airbender. This week, the stream is going to be ever so slightly different in that we're hosting it over on Twitch. This allows us to accommodate more than 2,000 people per round, so as many people as want to join can do so. You can tune in at twitch.tv slash supercarlinbrothers. Again, Again, that's twitch.tv slash supercarlinbrothers on Friday, October 2nd, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All that information in the description down below. Also guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some more Harry Potter action from us, you can check out this video right here. Where we talk about why Cordelius Fudge is the worst. Also, don't forget to go and vote. But otherwise guys, until next time, bye.